Thank you, Ricky. Over the next 10 minutes, I would like to introduce to you our work on transport equity in the three cities of Sao Paulo, Istanbul, and Mumbai. It's work that is looking at the equality in city access, a rather generic term, um, amongst different socioeconomic groups. It's largely based, or in fact entirely based, on our urban age survey, which we conducted between 2008 and 2010 in the three cities. And I will introduce the survey in a moment in greater detail. But before, I just thought it might be useful to uh, go back to some of the headline numbers on the three cities in question. And we have heard some of that already yesterday, and most of the information I'm presenting now you'll have in your newspaper. Here they are, the three cities, and of course uh, the headline figures are all well known to you on the metropolitan population, on uh, the GDP per capita. But let me uh, take a moment on the last figure, which is the Gini coefficient, and a measure for income inequality, which is so important for what I'm going to talk about in a moment. There's Sao Paulo with a Gini of 0.61. That's sort of an artificial measure, but it means a lot. It means that Sao Paulo amongst the cities of that size is amongst the most unequal in the world. There's Istanbul with 0.43, still above the international alert line, alarming levels of income inequality. And then surprisingly, there's Mumbai with, uh, one could say, a European level of income distribution rather equal. I guess that's a surprise uh, to a lot of us, but it's important to uh, reflect on that, and I hope I'll show you a couple of features that also speak about the equality levels in Mumbai. Second, and crucial to all our work, is the income, is the uh, residential density. Uh, and you can see that these cities are actually quite different, regardless that they have more or less similar populations. Uh, Sao Paulo is the least dense and uh, with in, in the inner sort of city area, uh, 10,000 person per square kilometer is only half the density of Istanbul and Mumbai is even 2.5 to, uh, times as dense. If you go to the maximum, the peak density uh, in Mumbai, uh, this is almost uh, four times what we have in Sao Paulo. And finally, the overview on transport and transport infrastructure. On the top, you'll have the maps on the rail systems. On the bottom, uh, the well-known diagrams on the modal shares, the distribution of transport use. Let me briefly highlight the key features. Sao Paulo is a city that was built around the car. It's based on roads and motorways. And it's not surprising that although it's not uh, a rich city like in the West, a third of the population travels by car. And even its public transport system is mainly bus-based. It's road-based public transport. And walking is a third, but uh, that, again, for a city that size and of that complexity is relatively low if you compare it to the others. Istanbul, by comparison, has already 45% of people walking in the metro region and has a far more diverse modal share of the public transport system. It cuts across rail and road-based transit systems, and its car use uh, is uh, lower than in Sao Paulo with 14%. And finally, Mumbai, which is the pedestrian mega city. More than 55% walk. Its uh, public transport system is mainly rail-based. It has a wonderful legacy of its rail system that has for many decades served uh, the metropolitan region in a very successful way and car use is minor. It doesn't really play a role, less than 2%. With that brief introduction, let me now go to our survey. Uh, I mentioned the years when we conducted the survey. Uh, it was commissioned by us, and uh, it was done by Ipsos Mori on the ground. It's a household survey uh, that uh, cut across a sample of 1,000 households across the metropolitan regions in each of the cities. It included various sections on uh, policy sectors, uh, and the transport section was uh, one of those most significant ones. The information we gathered on the transport patterns were related to the general transport patterns on access to cars, location, travel times, and we gathered information on the main daily trip, the purpose, the shares, and uh, the trip duration. Over the last uh, year, we have spent quite some time with my colleague Jens Kunt exploring how these transport patterns relate 
to socioeconomic factors. And the proxy we used here, and all the data I'm going to show you in a moment, is uh, related to education levels, simply because it's the most comparable or the best compar comparison across the three cities, the most robust indicator. So let's start with a very basic uh, pattern. And the basic pattern is uh, simply location, uh, distance to the city center. What you can see here for the three cities, in blue uh, we have Sao Paulo, in green we have Istanbul, and in sort of the uh, slight uh, light uh, brown it's Mumbai. We have these different uh, education level groups, as we want to call them, starting from the left, the least educated, to the right, the most educated. On the vertical, you have uh, the distance of average uh, house or housing of uh, these groups to the city center in meters. So the top is 24 kilometers. Across all cities, there's a very clear pattern. The poorer we are or the less educated we are, the further we live away from the city center. It's most extreme in Sao Paulo with a ratio between the least and the most well-educated of almost uh, like double the distance, 24 kilometers against 12 kilometers. But it's a pattern that repeats itself across the three. You can also recognize the lower density of Sao Paulo, meaning that everything is slightly more dispersed. And it's important to emphasize that this is not a pattern we know from most of the Western cities, where in fact uh, the distribution would be reversed. Now, very unfortunately, this um, sort of uh, regressive relationship when it comes to location is not compensated by better access to rapid transit system. What you see here again is across these three education groups, the accessibility measured in meters to the next rapid rail uh, system. Istanbul and Sao Paulo, pretty similar when it comes to that measure. But surprisingly, Mumbai really offers accessibility far beyond uh, levels of the other two cities. And yes, it's still regressive, but the absolute levels are really the ones that matter. And with about a kilometer for the least well-educated to the next rapid rail system, this is a very good uh, condition. And this condition is created, of course, by the linearity of the city and then by uh, this wonderful rail system which carries more than six million people a day. It is a massive success by uh, also a world standard, not only within uh, India. But accessibility goes far beyond location. And here are many of the factors which are typically discussed. For our survey, we mainly looked at time, recognizing though that cost and reliability, but other factors are crucial as well. This is probably the most shocking overview uh, and in many ways also the most telling. This shows you, again, education level against access to services, a composite indicator to a range of different services, again, for the three cities. And what you can see here is how different Sao Paulo, remember, with the highest income inequality, replicates that inequality when it comes to access to services. On the vertical, you have minutes, uh, a measure of how long it takes, on average, for these groups to access these services. Almost 40 minutes in Sao Paulo. In absolute term, this city is the least accessible. But again, it's the only city that also generates a very regressive relationship. It replicates inequality. Not so in Mumbai and in Istanbul. That's hardly a surprise if one reflects a bit uh, upon the spatial makeup of the city. Sao Paulo on the left peripheralizes the urban poor. They are pushed to the boundaries, and it's the physical situation that informs that pattern. Very different in Istanbul and in Mumbai, where the poor are still. It's changing, though, but they're still very much integrated within the urban fabric. Two more slides on trip duration. The first on work trips, and this is slightly surprising. What we see here for Istanbul and Mumbai is a pattern by which the more educated we are, the longer we travel. We're going to do more work on this, but there are two sort of speculations around that pattern. Number one, modal choice. Although it's more convenient to travel by car, it might actually take longer. Number two is that the richer, more affluent uh, populations can afford, because of uh, the cost of transport, to operate within the larger metropolitan region are, and are not forced to operate more localized. 
In uh, Sao Paulo, that uh, is a flat line across these different groups. And finally, a look at the non-work trips, which for, Sao Paulo, for Mumbai and for Istanbul repeats the pattern, where we can recognize a rather localized condition for the least uh, well-off, uh, a condition that's probably related to higher density and more mixed-use living. Uh, but unfortunately, in Sao Paulo, even for these trips, again, we are back to a pattern where the least well-educated have to travel longest, even for non-work trips. And finally, an overview on the access to cars, which of course confirms what we would expect for the three cities here, from the left to the right, again, these distributions. But take the example of Sao Paulo. Um, this, it's an exponential relationship between these groups and access to cars. And if you look at the higher educated, a shocking 80% have access to privately owned vehicles. Now that points to a whole other notion of transport equity, which is of course the condition, the modal choice of these relatively small groups, the small elite, uh, have on the overall city, far beyond an imprint on the city, far beyond mobility questions. It's questions about public space, it's questions about how we distribute that public space amongst the different uses. Again, not only transport. So let me conclude. Clearly, Mumbai is the accessibility machine amongst uh, the three cities. <laughs> but it compromises elsewhere. It probably compromises uh, personal living space compared to the others, housing quality, and there's severe overcrowding in public transport. Sao Paulo is the least accessible with the lowest transport equity, and that unfortunately on top of being already the highest in terms of income inequality. And finally, there is Istanbul, which sits somewhere between, but might offer something which is of great interest to us. There is maybe an hypothesis whereby we could suggest that Istanbul's consolidated informal development at relatively high density and high levels of mixed use actually provides the most inclusive urban form of urban development and minimizes the trade-off, which is the crucial story here, between access on the one hand and housing quality on the other. Final slide, and I have to do this always, the emphasis that it's space that is the machine. It's actually not the transport system, it's the location, it's how we build city, the urban fabric that ultimately informs the patterns that happen behind. Thank you very much.